Okay, um, what I'd like to do is kind of go back and review again a little bit of the fractions that you guys learned in Algebra 1. When, when we had a problem and an expression again with fractions, the easiest thing to do with that was rather than applying the fraction operations, but was to get rid of the fractions. And I'll just go through another example. Let's say I had 3x three, three um, over 6 plus 2 thirds equals um, 1 twelfth. Well, ladies and gentlemen, who wants to do all this math, right? Subtracting 2 thirds from 1 twelfth and then, and then dividing by 3 6. That's just a lot of work to do, right? But what you could do is say, all right, these all have common denominators. So if I multiplied everything by 12, which would be my LCM, that's not a 12, then I could simplify this fraction. Right to give me 6x plus 12. Right? So now, by multiplying by the LCM of your denominators, we can now um, eliminate all of our fractions, right? And this is much easier to solve for. No? Yes? You see what I have? 12 times 12, 3, 6 is really 1 half, right? 1 half times 12 is just going to leave. So I did 12 divided by 3, it leaves me with 2. 2 times 3 is 6. Or you could just say 3, eight, three over 6 is 1 half. 1 half times 12 is 6. 2 over 3 times 12, you could do 2 times 3 is 24. 24 divided by 3 is 8. Or you could just do 12 divided by 3 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. Multiple different ways of looking at it. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be the exact same idea we're going to want to apply up here. So when we look at this, what we want to do is be able to determine what is going to be our, leading, our, uh, our least common multiple for our denominators. So right now we have an expression in binomial x, my, x plus 3. And we have 6 and 18. Now between our numbers, what is our least common multiple between our numbers? 18, right? So let's just write this down. Because if you guys don't write it down, you're going to forget it or get it confused with maybe another problem. So our LCM is going to be 18. And then what else? What else do we have there? X plus 3, right? Exactly. So our LCM is going to be 18 times x plus 3. So what will happen if I multiply every single rational term by my LCM, what will happen is I'll no longer have a rational term. So let's go ahead and do that. So if I multiply by 18 times x plus 3, to here, I multiply this term times 18 times x plus 3. And I multiply here, I have 18 times x plus 3. So do you guys understand how I have to multiply everything to keep this an equivalent equation? Right? Whatever you do on one side of the equation, you have to do it on the other side. So I have to make sure I multiply everything time, time by these terms. So now by multiplying this, I notice there's a couple things that are going to divide to, divide to 1. Here, x plus 3 divided by x plus 3, that just goes to 1. So I'm left with 4 times 18, which is going to be 72. Does everybody understand how I got 72 from that? Anybody have any questions on that? Want me to re-explain? Nope, just 72. Yeah, because the x plus 3 and the x plus 3 divided out. And what you're going to notice is that's going to happen for everyone. Okay. So now, 6 divides into 18 how many times? 3. 3 times 5 is? So we could say 6 divided by 18, that just, this just now turns to the number 3. 3 times 5 is 15. So now I don't have a denominator, but it's 15 times x plus 3 equals, now I have 23. And now you have 18 divided into 18 how many times? 1. So in general, I just have 23 times x plus 3. Now do I have an equation, ladies and gentlemen, that's a little bit easier to solve? Yeah, this looks a lot easier to solve than that, right? So now let's apply a distributive property. So therefore, I have 72 plus 15x plus 45 equals 23x plus uh, 46. Huh? Yeah, I know. About times 2 would be 46. And now doing times 3 would be 69. Go ahead, yeah. 
So now all I need to do is simply get all my terms onto the same side. So I'll get my x's to the same side. And then I can combine 72 plus 45, which is going to give me a 117. So I have 117 equals, this is going to be 8x plus 69. And now to isolate my x, I subtract the 69. So now I have 117 minus 69, which will be 48 equals 8x. Then the last step you want to do is now divide by 8, and you're going to get 6. So the main important thing, ladies and gentlemen, to do when you're doing this problem is to make sure that you multiply by your LCM. Yes? Uh, why did you do distributive when you had the same, like, 23x plus 3, 15x plus 3? Why don't you just take 15x plus 3 away from 23x plus 3 and leave it with 8 and x plus 3? It comes out the same. I'm sorry, I say this again? Why didn't you take, go up to the top, why didn't you take 15x plus 3 away from, or right under there, away from 23x plus 3? To leave it with 72 is equal Oh, to subtract it? You could have done that as well. Yeah, I just feel like that would have been a lot faster. That, yeah, but the only thing, yeah, that's, you could easily do that. Um, and then, yes, but then you just would have been changing the fraction. But yeah, absolutely, that's definitely something you could do. I'm pretty much doing this without having to do any fractional operations. Like if you had no idea how to add or subtract fractions or you totally forgot, here's a way that you can do it without having to do anything with fractions, right? Guys, I'll remind you.